the mass energy method is a revolutionary approach to handling emotional problems. And it puts people in control of their life. And that's the mission statement. To assist people to be in control of their life and live their own dreams. And that is the mission statement to work. Now, where did it start? How did it start? My background is not as a psychologist. If I was a psychologist, I'd be doing what they're doing. My background is that of a ship's captain, a master mariner. And I left my ship in Singapore to come home to Australia for some leave. And I stopped off in Perth where my family were living. And my brother put to me a proposition by a fellow called Korzybski, a Polish mathematician. And as a result of that conversation, it was about time. What is time? Now, the thing is this. I knew all about time because I was a ship's captain in the middle of the Pacific. How do you find out where you are? This is before the days of satellites. To find out where you were, you needed a good chronometer and a sextant. They have the basic instruments you needed, a good chronometer and a sextant. And from that, you were using mathematics, you could work out exactly where you were. So, I, but without time, you wouldn't have a clue. You could be anywhere. Time was an essential ingredient in navigation, away from land. And what this I had a look at was was, was this business of, of time. And I realised that basically there's no such thing as time itself. Time is only the manifestation of motion. Without motion, there is no time. Now that blew me apart. I ended up totally exterior. Now, that set me on the path of research and experience. I even resigned my job as a captain, ship's captain and devoted myself to searching into life. And I, I used many methodologies tried all kinds of systems. I did that for years. And then a very good friend of mine, John Avery and I were talking and we were discussing emotional problems. And I, I was discussing some issue I had. And while I was discussing it, all of a sudden, I had this image of, a mental image of some bloody object. I forget what it was even. But it was totally non sequitur to what we were doing. It had no bearing whatsoever on what we were talking about, what I was talking about. Just this, this sudden mental picture popped up. So I said to John, hold it, hold it, hold it. I want to change roles. And I said, I explained to him that if you put your attention on, on a feeling, you'll eventually get an image. And he said, what kind of an image? I said, I don't know. Well, how are you going to get one? I said, I just know you will. You're going to get an image if you put your attention on this feeling. And after quite a while, he agreed to try it. And he also got a mental image. Now, that is the start of the, this method of mine, the most energy method. And that's where it all started. That's it. It, was, it wasn't any analytical decision. It just totally out of the blue. And from there on, it was a case of experience, 
trying this and trying that. And the archives are full of procedures which I have abandoned. They got there, but they were very, what you call a slow boat to China. Until today, you can see a man in front of me who, who's a, a drug addict. And within 15 minutes, he's no longer a drug addict. Because we've handled the cause of his addiction without him talking about it. But there have been many, many years of development, improving. An interesting one was the, the worst moment. Now, the worst moment is singular, it's moment, not moments. It's a moment. Now, a moment has no definition because it's too small, it's too narrow. A moment itself is timeless. And that's when I suddenly realised when you put a person into the worst moment of any incident, they are now there in a state of timelessness. Devoid of any uh, and, and no uh, need to talk about anything. They're just sitting there in a timeless state. But now they can tell you everything about it. But as I say, that was purely and simply an, an analysis of, a, of an incident. The worst moment. It's singular. But that is probably one of the a few elements which is arrived by an analysis. All the other developments, they just come out of the blue, just popped up. Oh, oh, God, of course, that's the answer. Oh, that's the answer. Just out of the blue. Until today, just recently I wrote the article, what was it called? Um, uh, what was it called now? You right. mean, you mean the analyzing metal imagery? That's the one, yeah, analyzing metal imagery. When I realized what the mind was. Now the nature of the mind Has, has never actually been addressed. I mean, people have been talking about it, but no one understood what the mind was. And after all these years of research and, and, and piloting and experimentation, in that article, I suddenly, while I was writing the article, it suddenly hit me what the mind was. The mind is the interface between the being and the material universe. I would say that was the culmination of nearly 55 years, of over 55 years of research. It started with John Avery and I talking about something and I've got this mental image which was totally non sequitur. But as you know, the whole of uh, this work revolves around mental imagery. But after all those years, I suddenly realised what the mind was. It's the interface between the being and the material universe. In other words, my search had been completed. There's nowhere else to go. That is the ultimate answer, what the mind is. So you can't see the mind. You can't describe it. But unfortunately, and this gets back to psychology, psychology 
has mixed the mind up with the being. 